Gardening throughout The Sims games is a lot of fun and a sure way for your characters to have a hobby, always have something to eat, make a living out of selling produce so not having to work some random job, and even better their dishes in some of the later Sims games. So here is a brief history of gardening in The Sims. Hello everyone and welcome to The Sims Lore. Today, we're looking at gardening, which sim game it was first introduced in, what your sims can do, and some tips and tricks as well. But first, a word from Every Farm, the sponsor of this video. Every Farm is a multiplayer farm building game where you can grow crops, produce all sorts of goods with the harvest, open and run a restaurant and cook with your produce, and also meet new friends all over the world as you grow your farm, collect, and build exciting items. There are 50 types of crops on the farm to choose from and 30 types of food and beverages in the restaurant, a sure way to keep you busy and entertained. You can even go to a friend's farm, help or get help from them and interact with many unique characters, unveiling interesting interesting stories throughout the gameplay. There are lots of cool buildings to choose from as well, and you can decorate your farm any way you like. Every Farm is a free-to-play farming blockchain game on the WeMix platform where you can harvest your produce and earn Flero tokens through playing the game. So download Every Farm today and manage the best farm in the village. So grab your snacks and don't forget that snack report in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this if you enjoyed it. Alright, let's get into the video. Gardening was first introduced in The Sims Unleashed. You had to buy one garden plot for 65 simoleons in build mode, send your sim to Custer's Market to get some seeds from the seeds rack, and only then your sim could start planting and gardening. Whilst you're at the market, you can have a chat to the gardener Bob, who can tell you about sorting and selling vegetables, caring for your garden, pests that you may encounter, and his plant tonic. With storing, he will tell you about the pantry, he says that a pantry can be used as a fridge. You can store your produce there and also grab a quick snack or make full meals. Selling your vegetables tells you all about how you can turn your gardening into your business. Any community lot that has a vegetable cart can be used to sell your produce. And if your vegetables get big enough, you can come sell them directly to Bob and he'll give you a good price for them. Then Bob gives you some small tips to get you started, such as watering, pulling weeds, and keeping pests at bay. Pests include gophers and bunnies, and the main tip is to get a hunting cat or a scarecrow to deter them away. Gardener Bob also offers a plant tonic that he describes to have had astonishing results on his own crop. And then he follows all of that praise with use at your own risk. Alright Bob, that gives me plenty confidence to buy your shitty tonic. There are a few easy ways to get started with gardening. You can move your sims in the Morris Cottage on the Gunther Goth Highway, which is a starter garden home that came ready with a starter orchard and a few different garden plots. Or you can move them in Appleview Farm, which is a bit bigger, has more orchard trees and more plots to plant your crops in. You will still need to go get seeds, however, if you want to grow different plants. You can plant several plants. These are carrots, tomatoes, and beans. The Sims Making Magic Pack introduced elderberries and grapes. So here are a few tips to keep in mind whilst gardening in The Sims Unleashed. Number one, weeds have a detrimental effect on your crops, so as soon as you see them, get rid of them. Number two, carrots and lettuce will require replanting after harvest, but tomatoes and beans will regrow after the harvest. Number three, when you have the pantry, you will be able to store vegetables and make meals. However, one vegetable will make only one meal and three will make a group meal. Snacks are always available. Number four. When you purchase the tonic from Bob the Gardener and use it on your own crop, there is a 15% chance that it will be destroyed, but a 25% chance that you will get the giant vegetables Bob was talking about. You can't store them in your pantry, but they can be sold back to Bob for a hefty amount. Number five, dogs can help you water your crops uh, by, <clears throat> they just help, okay? However, keep them away if their mood is less than zero and they're in need of fun or they might destroy your plots. All right, now moving on to The Sims 2. Gardening was introduced with The Sims 2 Seasons. A lot more detail was added to the gardening skill in this game. It also became much easier to garden as the game introduced the dirt patch, which is 10 simoleons a tile and can be placed like tiles all at once. The option to plant and fertilize many, which gives your sim the ability to plant on all soil patches to make planting easier. 
and also the addition of a greenhouse, which allows your sim to keep their plants intact in the winter months. Maple plant. <coughs> Not much else changed from The Sims Unleashed to The Sims Seasons, except pests such as bunnies or gophers were no longer included in The Sims 2. There are, however, insects as pests. It's still almost just as hard to care for your plants as well as caring for your sims, but if you play someone like Lloyd McGregor in River Blossom Hills, then it's much easier to do since he doesn't have a family or partner. Bruh. The pack open for business introduced talent badges. This came before seasons by one year and allowed sims to acquire something called a talent badge. These measured the experience of a sim in a particular skill that would be profitable, such as flower arrangement and toy making. Then, when Seasons was released, two more talent badges were added to fit the gameplay, gardening and fishing. This allows your sim to better their gardening or fishing and earn a bronze, silver or gold talent badge, depending on the amount they spent honing either skill. New plants were also introduced from the previous sim game. Your sim can plant tomatoes, cucumber, strawberries, pole beans, peppers and eggplants whilst gardening in The Sims 2 Seasons. They can also purchase orchard trees which yield apples, oranges and lemons, but they are quite costly, going for 1200 simoleons each. The trees do not need watering or fertilizing, but they do need spraying or tending when infested or overgrown. Otherwise, you might find that they die pretty quickly. If you keep a ladybug house, this should help with the frequency of infestation. If your sim is new at gardening, they will only be able to plant tomatoes, but as they get more experienced, more seeds are unlocked and available to them. Fertilizing the soil costs 10 simoleons per bag, and doing so before planting will give you more of a chance to grow high quality fruits and vegetables. This way, you can make more of a profit when trying to sell your produce. Hovering over your plants shows their current status. These include healthy and sickly, but are accompanied by different smiley faces to show you how healthy or sickly they are. It also shows you if they're on the mend. For example, a sickly plant or an okay plant will have a green arrow pointing up if it's in the process of becoming healthier. Harvesting the produce can yield bland or mouth-watering vegetables and fruits. This all depends on how well your sim took care of the plants whilst they were developing. These are the fresh food points that are added for each item with a mouth-watering crop harvest. Once your crop is ready to harvest, you can either choose to sell the produce or harvest them for yourself. You then get a stock interaction for the fridge, which acts as if you went to the grocery store and bought some groceries. When your sim reaches a certain level, they will be greeted by a member of the gardening club. They just come over, shake hands, and your sims gets a memory of becoming a member. This allows your sim to get discounts on seeds and fertilizer, and you can enter in contests and win prizes for having the best garden. If you have the greenhouse, you can get the toasty garden lamp sans toast, which will help the plants in your greenhouse grow. You can also get a compost bin, where you can throw in your dead plants or your raked leaves and turn into compost, so you will have to pay less or even nothing on fertilizing your garden, all depending on how much compost you've made. You can also get the Garden Spritzer, which is a standard sprinkler that comes in three different sizes, covering a certain percentage of tiles. The Sims 2 University also introduced the cow plant, which isn't necessarily part of the gardening feature, however, I needed to mention it. The cow plant comes as a career reward after completing the natural science career. You can feed and milk it, however, well, you know, it can eat your Sims. I think she deserves a whole other video though, so stay tuned. Now onto a few tips. Number one, your sim can also talk to plants if they have the gold talent badge. This improves the health of sick plants and trees drastically. Number two, make sure to buy a ladybug house if you want to keep other bugs at bay. They can still infest your crops, but there is a lesser chance. Number three, if your sim sprays sick trees too much, they can turn into a plant sim. So if this wasn't the plant, <laughs> see what I did there? Plant, okay. Yeah, so just be careful if you don't want your sims to become a plant sim. Plants that are in the greenhouse with a ladybug house as well do not get infested. Number four. If you want to enter the garden competition, make sure to clean up around the lot as it can affect your final score. All right, now The Sims 3. Gardening came with The Sims 3 base game and it added a much more detailed version than previous games. Between the myriad of produce, achievements, special plants and more, The Sims 3 served us with the best gardening feature by far. 
You could plant quite a few vegetables, fruits, and special plants and ingredients that I will not call out, but as you can see here, there's lots of choice. Of course, the more packs and store content you have, the more choice for fruit, veg, and plants. Because of the open world feature, your sims can find seeds on the ground throughout town. Easiest way to find seeds is to get the Collection Helper Lifetime Reward, where you can see the seeds available for collection on the map. This, however, did not work for me for some reason. I think the last patch broke it or something. Who knows? But maybe you can give it a try and let me know if it works for you. Your sim can also find different types of garden and wild plants around town, which they can harvest and replant in their own garden. Starting off gardening is probably easiest if you head over to the grocery store and purchase some vegetables and fruits there. You can learn by doing or head over to the bookstore or library to learn more about the gardening skill. You also had some lifetime rewards, such as having the perfect garden, which would be completed if your sim plants and grows eight different species of perfect plant. This would go hand in hand with the new green thumb trait and the super green thumb reward trait, which would make your sim gain the skill much faster, have higher quality produce, revive dead plants, prefer to watch the gardening channel and cries when they see a dead plant, amongst many others. There are several in-depth statistics available to view in the skill journal. There are also several challenges that you can complete, such as Master Planter, Botanical Boss, and Master Farmer. All have different requirements. You can pause here to read which ones they are. Harvested produce can be sold at the grocery store, in the inventory, or be used as cooking ingredients in the recipes available. Depending on which packs you have, you can also use them in nectar making, mixology, alchemy, jam and preserves, science, and as fish bait. Compared to The Sims 2, there are many more quality values. These are horrifying, putrid, foul, bad, normal, nice, very nice, great, excellent, outstanding, and perfect. Each has a base percentage value and will be determined from the quality of the crop. Alongside the addition of all the quality values, a sim can now fertilize a crop with a specific fertilizer. Fish, other plants and vegetables, and some produce can be used to fertilize a crop. Depending on what's used and its quality will affect the quality of the produce yielded from said crop. With the addition of Supernatural, mushrooms became available. There are two types, edible and inedible. These would be heavily used in alchemy, but also cooking. With University Life, herbs and coffee beans were added, which can be used for cooking, eating raw, burned on a bonfire or fireplace, and tea making. The herbs give you different moodlets or get rid of certain existing ones. The money tree makes a comeback from The Sims 2 rewards, but as a gardening item. You can grow a money tree by receiving the seeds from opportunities like fishing or analyzing an unknown special seed. These trees grow simoleon leaves and bags filled with simoleons. There is also the omni plant, which can be used to replicate the things it is fed. You can feed the omni plant books, harvestable produce, fish, meats, and other grocery ingredients, candles, rubber duckies, teddy bears, and toy box toys. The cow plant also makes a return in The Sims 3, by the way. She is, however, behind a paywall. She is sold as part of a set called the Killer Classics on The Sims 3 store. Ugh, no surprise there. All right, so here are a few tips. Number one, weeds only increase the growth time of the plant. It does not kill it. Number two, watch out for zombies, horses, or deer as they will either eat or destroy your plants. Number three, there is no greenhouse, but you can still plant indoors with planter boxes. If you don't, your plants will be dormant until mid-spring. Number four, the harvester, available with The Sims 3 Ambitions, can be used to harvest several plants all at once. Alright guys, there you have it, that's all The Sims games right there. I'm just kidding, of course we can't forget The Sims 4. The gardening skill, much like The Sims 3, came with the base game. Just like The Sims 3, Sims can learn by doing or through a skill book. After reaching level 2, they can research gardening on a computer or research plant when they're interacting with one. The main difference between The Sims 4 and the rest of The Sims games is that you can plant seeds on the bare earth. No tiles, pots, or anything else is required. Similarly to the first Sims game, you can purchase seeds not at a market, but through the computer. That's an easy way to start your garden. Alternatively, you can also harvest other plants around the world and plant them in your garden as well. The harvested produce can be eaten, used in cooking and herbalism, and sold. One of the new additions to gardening that The Sims 4 brought about is the ability to evolve a plant. 
When a plant has reached maximum health, a sim with at least two gardening skill points is then able to evolve it, meaning it will increase the quality of the produce. Unlike The Sims 3, Sims 4 went down in quality value, having only normal, nice, excellent, magnificent and perfect produce quality. Another new feature is the ability to graft plants. A sim with at least level 5 in gardening is able to cut a piece of a plant and make hybrid plants that grow multiple produce at once. A sim can take a cutting from one plant and graft it onto another to begin the process. This is a table that shows two pairs of plants that will produce a new type of crop. Amongst these is the cowberry, which produces a cow plant. That's right, The Sims 4 removed our dear girl from behind the paywall and into the game. Honestly, probably the only good thing that came out of The Sims 4 base game. <laughs> Alright guys, there you have it, the history of gardening in The Sims. I hope you enjoyed this and let me know in the comments below which sim game has your favourite gardening feature. I would like to thank my Soul Soul channel members Jiggly and Chrissy Pine. Thank you both for your support. I would also like to thank my patrons Whitney Marion, Papa Khan, Negative Dana, Aurora Grimm, LeMay, ML, Alia Deshayas, Shelby Hill, Perlog Anwell, Amy Louise, Carolyn, Kitajan the Arcane Archer, Nicole Dante, Artsy Flashback, Nathan Lim, and Asmina. Thank you all so much for supporting my channel. That's it for today's video, thank you all so much for watching, please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know your theories in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more lore and updates. I'll see you in my next video, bye!